This principle of opportunity cost applies also to the choices we have to make as a society between current consumption and future consumption, between the kind of things that we could have to use now and investment which will enable us to enjoy future consumption. We have to make a trade-off. How much do we want to enjoy current consumption? How much do we want to delay consumption in order to enjoy it in the future? For example, a piece of steel can be used to make a motor car that I can travel in now, or it can be used to make a piece of machinery which will enable future consumption. Now, these choices between current and future consumption we can illustrate with a diagram. Once again, we've drawn an opportunity cost curve, but this time, instead of output of two different products, we've drawn current consumption on the x-axis and future consumption on the y-axis. Suppose a society chooses to consume at point Z. At this point, citizens would enjoy O C prime T of current consumption. They would be foregoing present consumption of X C prime T so that some resources can be put into future consumption. This investment will produce future consumption next year of C prime T plus one. For this year's process to be worthwhile, this year's foregone consumption really needs to be less than the consumption it will make available next year. So C prime Tx will be less than C prime T plus one. The economic problem of future versus current consumption is not the result of specific economic or political systems. It's a problem faced by all societies, whether they use a planned or a market economy. In fact, most economies use a mix of both. In the UK, markets do not determine the allocation of resources towards healthcare. This is largely determined by the state. Whereas it's the market that determines how many resources are allocated to the production of clothing, for example. You see lots of these vendors in Bulgaria on the side of the streets. Some of them are doing it legally. Some of them are doing it illegally because they don't have a license. This illustrates an important point about economies. And the important point is this. We shouldn't think that we're choosing between a market system or a planned system. There are all kinds of variations on a theme between the two extremes. So you can have a basically market system with some kind of government control. That's what we've got here. This is a free market. People are free to buy and sell at any price that the street vendor sets. But it's not entirely free because the state insists on having some kind of control over who does it and where they do it. So we're choosing not between two extremes, but between two extremes and all the intermediate possibilities. The Bulgarian economy, as it struggles to transform itself into a modern market economy, provides rich examples of many of the principles of economics. Even at the outset of a course, I hope you can see that the Bulgarian economy illustrates for us some key ideas. Resources for a society are scarce. The output we can produce is limited. We need to produce with these resources the things that most meet people's needs and preferences. The principle of opportunity cost is central to this decision. So is the question of how we embrace markets as a means of doing so. As we shall see, markets are far from perfect. But in countries like Bulgaria, they're providing a superior alternative to the command economy of the past. <laughs>